Today, we're going to be talking about the autonomic nervous system. Now, the autonomic nervous system, it is a part of the nervous system. It has cells called neurons that have axons and dendrites. The, the neurons uh, parts of the autonomic nervous system are a little bit different um, than neurons of the rest of the nervous system, which is called the somatic nervous system. We're not gonna go into that kind of detail, but otherwise it's very, very similar. Now, um, the reason that I'm going to go into a bit more nerdy detail in the autonomic nervous system than in many of our subjects is because this topic is going to be so important for those of you who are going into clinical programs. So if you're going into PA school or uh, nursing programs, uh, then this topic is particularly important. And why? Because a really significant number of medications that have been invented uh, to treat um, medical conditions, um, whether that's treating high blood pressure or treating a patient who's uh, dying of shock in front of you, a large number of those are medications that interact with these parts of the autonomic nervous system. So this is actually something, uh, hang on to your notes if you're going into a clinical program. Let's start off with the basics. The autonomic nervous system is the part of the nervous system that we don't have conscious access to very well. Um, it is divided up into two different parts. One is called the sympathetic nervous system and the other is called the, para, oops, the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So sympathetic and parasympathetic, right? So the two different sides. The sympathetic, I don't know how they got their names. The sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight. So let's start with another easy concept. Whenever you are thinking about the, the sympathetic nervous system, it is useful to remember that even though it has lots of different actions, all of the actions of the sympathetic nervous system in general are going to be useful if you are fighting off a saber-toothed tiger or trying to run away from it. Yeah, either way, you're toast. Saber-toothed tires were bad, but um, that's the sympathetic nervous system. So keep that in the back of your mind. We'll go into that. The parasympathetic nervous system is kind of the opposite. People whose research is on the parasympathetic nervous system hate it when physiology instructors say that it's the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system because there are other differences. However, in general, when you need to memorize, well, what does the parasympathetic nervous system do? Then it's all the things that would be useful if you were hanging out by the campfire, telling your friends about the time you fought off the saber-toothed tiger, right? Now, the sympathetic nervous system is known as the adrenergic part. We'll talk about why. The parasympathetic part is known as the cholinergic part. Again, we will talk about Right now, how to remember all the actions of the sympathetic nervous system? Well, what would be useful if you were going to run away from a saber-toothed tiger? Because I ain't fighting one. Probably not getting away from one either, right? Well, you would like it if you could take lots, you would need lots of air, right? You'd need to take big gulps of air because you're running away. And the sympathetic nervous system it dilates the airways. So like your, particularly your bronchi, it makes them bigger in diameter so you can get big gulps of air. Dilates the bronchi, right? You need to run. So you need your heart to beat faster and harder. So heart beats faster and harder so that you got more blood going to your muscles. Oh, your muscles need more blood going to them. So you need to open uh, the blood vessels that are taking blood to your um, skeletal muscle and to your heart, right? You would probably need to prioritize your blood to your muscles. So you need to close down the blood vessels that go 
open the blood vessels to the skeletal muscle. And then you need to close down the blood vessels. Whoops, blood vessels. Yeah, that go to your intestines and your stomach. Okay. Um, you would probably want there to be more glucose in your bloodstream so that you can feed it to your muscles and to your brain, right? And so all of these are actions of the uh, sympathetic nervous system. It dilates your bronchi, it opens up some blood vessels, particularly to skeletal muscle and to your heart muscle. It closes down blood vessels to your intestines. Um, and it makes your heart beat harder and faster, right? So instead of trying to memorize them all, kind of group them together and make them make sense in your brain, right? More understanding and less, um, and less memorizing. So what is sympathetic tone? You know, when it came to talking about the way a nerve cell would command a muscle cell, that nerve cell would either cause the muscle cell to contract or it doesn't. The autonomic nervous system is different. The autonomic nervous system is pretty much always talking to the glands and to the smooth muscle and heart muscle that it instructs. So uh, sympathetic, um, well, we'll come back to that. So when it comes to the way your uh, autonomic nervous system is talking to the heart, let's just talk about the heart. Okay. The heart has got one uh, set of neurons that are talking to heart muscle and to the um, the sinoatrial node, okay? And every time there is an action potential coming down here, it is saying increase how hard the heart is beating and increase heart rate. So it just makes the heart beat harder and faster. Now, simultaneously, there is a different neuron coming from the parasympathetic nervous system. And it is saying, please don't beat so fast. Now, if this was the, uh, the somatic neurons, they would be sending like a pulse every time they wanted the heart to beat. But that's not the way our heart works. Our heart beats on its own. If you, if you actually cut all of the nerves to the heart, the heart continues to beat, right? So then what are these nerves going to the heart? The nerves going to the heart are just counseling the heart to beat faster or to beat more slowly. Okay, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like your heart is the engine in your car and the for the heart, the parasympathetic nervous system is like the brake and the sympathetic nervous system is like the gas pedal. Oh, that's not how you spell break. Oh no, that's terrible. I hardly ever do that. Man, all right. And so one of the interesting things about the autonomic nervous system is that these particular neurons they don't sort of send out an action potential and then stop for long periods of time the way our somatic neurons do. Instead, they're kind of always sort of talking to the heart. And the amount of signal that's going to the heart or to your glands or to your intestines or to your lungs, uh, the amount that's coming from the sympathetic side is called sympathetic tone. Um, with the heart, we generally have a greater parasympathetic tone than sympathetic tone. And so when it comes to your heart, if we cut both of these nerves so that the gas pedal is not controlling the heart and the brake is not controlling the heart, if we just cut those, the heart actually would speed up. 
because we have more parasympathetic stimulation to the heart than sympathetic. And that is known as vagal tone. So vagal tone is the opposite of sympathetic tone. Vagal tone is how much break or how much parasympathetic and sympathetic tone is how much information is coming to speed up the heart in the case of the heart. We'll be talking more about the heart and I will be referring back to these concepts when we do. So the autonomic nervous system, remember the sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight, running or fighting, parasympathetic rest and digest. Now, the dominant neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system are norepinephrine, but also epinephrine, okay? Re really the most important one is norepinephrine. Yeah, there's another one, okay? So sympathetic neurotransmitters. Now, uh, the older name for epinephrine was adrenaline, and the older name for norepinephrine was noradrenaline. I don't know why they changed the name. But adrenaline is the reason that the sympathetic nervous system, it is referred to as adrenergic. Adrenergic. Here we go. Adren, adrenergic. Okay? Because the neurotransmitter is adrenaline. The parasympathetic neurotransmitters, the parasympathetic neuro neurotransmitters, they are acetylcholine primarily. We're going to see there's acetylcholine gets used for more than that, but, the, but when the parasympathetic nervous system is talking to the heart, for example, it talks to the heart by releasing acetylcholine, and that is why this part is called cholinergic. These receptors are cholinergic, because they receive acetylcholine. For both sides of the autonomic nervous system, the effectors or the tissues that are going to make stuff happen, those are the effectors. They are cardiac muscle, heart muscle, glands, like your salivary glands or uh, the adrenal medulla, uh, the smooth muscle of the intestinal tract, blood vessels, oh, smooth muscle around the airways. Those are our effectors. The effectors of the somatic nervous system are mostly skeletal muscle, right? So um, <clears throat> when we see effector, we mean, well, who's the final recipient of these signals? And the job of the autonomic nervous system is control how fast your heart is beating, uh, how much saliva you're making or not, how fast your intestinal tract is doing its thing, um, how open your blood vessels are, one way to control blood pressure, how open your airways are, okay? Autonomic nervous system. All right, let me stick me down here in the corner. Okay, so the arrangement of the, uh, sorry, the arrangement of the autonomic nervous system is different than the arrangement of the somatic nervous system. And I don't have the somatic nervous system on here. Okay, so I'm going to draw the somatic nervous system in red. In the somatic nervous system, in the somatic nervous system, there will be a neuron that's got its cell body, sorry, I'm going to draw it in red. It's going to have its cell body right here in the ventral horn of the spinal cord, and it will send out its axon out all the way down to a skeletal muscle, okay? One neuron that goes all the way from the spinal cord to the effector, that's somatic. Somatic, that's, you know, moving muscles, right? Now, the autonomic nervous system is different in that it has two neurons. It has one that goes from the spinal cord to something called a ganglion, and it has another one that goes from the ganglion to the effector. We're going to pick up there at the beginning of our next lecture.